then when when the client comes and big expectations on on every side you know you are excited the client is excited you know and then the client makes mm, it's okay, or, you know, something like that. <laughs> or he even is disappointed because his expectations were way too high. Yes. All right, here we go. And action. Yeah, you ready? <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. <clears throat> What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something slightly different, we have a slightly different format. Um, today I have Jan with me. Yep. Uh, you have not seen Jan yet in any of the videos, but Jan is uh, the other um, half of Hyperfocus. And uh, today we're actually going to uh, be talking about lean digital branding and kind of taking a bit more of a deep dive into having a conversation and explaining what that actually means uh, to us and also uh, for you guys out there when applying uh, some of these methods that we're hopefully um, teaching that you can uh, then adopt and uh, apply to your startups. So uh, we're gonna be going a little bit raw with this and a little bit more kind of, yeah, it'll be uh, uncensored. We're just gonna shoot from the from the hip and just have a conversation. And we're inviting you guys in to, to listen to some of the stuff that we're gonna be talking about. Um, yeah, so let's jump straight in. Sure, um, let's do it. Yeah, I wanna talk a little bit about the origins of uh, lean development and, and what that actually means. Yeah, I mean, uh, the terminology, lean startup, lean branding, you know, some of you guys might have heard this. So uh, the lean startup was definitely first. It's a it's a methodology from um, Eric Ries, and it's basically um, about developing business and, and products. Um, it's yeah, it's this this cycle like build, uh, measure, learn, and do this uh, over and over and over and over again, and to just yeah test rapidly um, if something like a concept like a product if it works mm -hmm. or not, and if not, then yeah, align, learn, develop, make it better till it works. That's like the the idea, and then it's also I think this constant uh, state of beta mm -hmm. mindset is involved there too that it's you, you always can make something better and and develop something i think what's also interesting is like if we just kind of so we'll give you a little bit of a, a background of, of where both of us are actually from or where, where we come from from our career perspectives um, i spent like the last uh, 10 or so years um, working in the digital product development space and um, so i'm used to like a a lot of methods and methodologies actually being uh, used, especially over the last five years. Um, I've seen a huge kind of growth and uh, maturity in uh, UX in particular, uh, where we see, because a lot of decision making is based on, um, yeah, the, the like... Gut feeling. Yeah. Well, it's based on gut feeling, but also um, from a UX perspective, um, you have to kind of look at the decision making analytically to understand how you get from point A to point B to mm. make to cut boundaries and to kind of help to make the decision decision process as, as uh, kind of fluid as, as possible. Mm. I mean, it's, it's the, the job of a UX designer to to lay out information as clearly as possible so the user doesn't doesn't necessarily get lost. Okay, so I thought mean, you mean the, the old way of decision making is based no, no, on no. gut feeling. Yeah, okay. Um, from from a UX perspective, and you know, I've seen that over the last. I mean, even if we look five years, five if we look back five years ago, the term UX was not even a thing. That you were not a UX designer, you were an information architect. Okay, and you can see that the industry has really embraced um, certain methods and certain ideas, like from Scrum to to uh, sprint methodologies as well, um, which is just kind of you know rapidly. Um, shooting towards um, goals as quickly as, as possible and kind of time boxing and time framing uh, certain parts of, of projects to help to uh, to iterate on, on the process mm -hmm. and so yeah with that being said um, it's this is kind of my background I've seen the industry change and, and the way that things are done and um, yeah I mean you come from more of a traditional I mean I say traditional but 
Um, Let's say the industry is it's more traditional where, where I come from. So I basically did uh, brand design, brand development all the time. And yeah, I, I think there is a, there's, a, there's a big gap between like the industry where, where you spend a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, the last years in, so the digital product development. And then um, let's say yeah the the, the classic uh, brand design industry or also I would say advertising too you know these kind of industries um, because maybe just to explain where we see this big difference for example um, usually when you do like a, like a bigger branding project yeah then you 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 get your briefing and then you. Uh, You go into a dark room with your team for whatever, like maybe even two months or something, mm -hmm. and you work, 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 and then like there's this, you work to, towards this big reveal, yeah. Then when when the client comes and big expectations on on every side, you know, you are excited, the client is excited, you know, and then the client makes. Mm, Yeah, it's okay, or, you know, something like that. <laughs> or even is disappointed because his expectations were way too high, you know. Or the 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 design uh, company uh, they just they just uh, were on the uh, on the wrong path, you mm -hmm. know, and and did something what the client didn't expect or was not his intention to to be like that. So this actually st is still happening a lot, and yeah. I think what we think is a better approach is to really replace presentation with collaboration. Yeah. And, you know, stop doing to work on your own and, uh, as, um, you know, have just all these assumptions in your head and yeah, this might be this and this blah. I mean, the, the client is obviously the one who knows his business the best, you know, and of course there's a briefing and there's a lot of information But you need a constant conversation to really uh, develop something where, like everybody is, uh, which is effective and also everybody is happy with at the end of the day. Because you also need to give your client the the tools he need to then again communicate, like this what what you're doing, like maybe like a rebranding inside his own company and to his employees and to his partners, you know. And when he's not involved, then it's it's much harder for him to. To, to then also sell it to, to, to into his own company. I think uh, collaboration is a, a really uh, important point there as well. Um, I see, especially in, in product development, collaboration is, is really important, especially when you're working um, within a team that has many different disciplines. You often have a back-end developer, you have a front-end developer, then you have UX designer, UI designer, PO, etc., etc. So there's a very diverse uh, team. and. Um, actually bringing those people together to collaborate, you know, to understand and have the same, uh, to speak, speak the same language is, is, is really important. And, you know, it, it sounds quite easy, but I think, you know, um, it's, I mean, the amount of times when I've been on uh, bigger uh, projects and I've been in a lead position, just trying to get people to um, collaborate is, you know, it sounds really easy, but it can be quite, quite difficult. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's another thing that I'd um, also like to discuss as well in um, agile development is, or agile, uh, in agile processes, is um, the place of rituals and how rituals play, play a role. And I think it's really important, you know, because I think there's that definite um, separation between um, designer, uh, PO and client in the, in the classic form. Um, but when you bring rituals into into play, especially in uh, product development, then you time box things. So you're able to kind of allocate certain spaces where people can come together and, and work. And I think that that's really important because if you're just asking for a designer to go to the other side of the room and work with the developer, then it's never going to happen. And I, and I constantly say collaborate, collaborate, go and talk. Have you not spoken? And time after time, this doesn't happen. And I think. Some of these rituals, you know, we, we have these and these are some of the things that we're testing. We have our UI and UX or our brand uh, check-ins with, with the other creatives. And I think, you know, this really helps for us to actually have a conversation. And, you know, sometimes we also um, 
I mean, we don't want to get bogged down with rituals, right? We don't want to be going from meeting to meeting to meeting. We want to pick the ones that work for us and, and run, run with those. And uh, yeah, to, to, to bring those people together is like, it's a really, I know, even if there's nothing to talk about, just stick with the rituals. It's really cool because you get a chance to actually be able to just talk. And it's, it sounds like a very, it's not like, maybe it doesn't sound agile or future thinking or modern or whatever, but just getting back to kind of those basic having a chat mm-hmm. and kind of sharing the information. But this, uh, the whole kind of um, agile process uh, says do this, you know, come together and try stuff and, and time box it and, and, and try things and see, see what works and what doesn't. But sticking to other things I think is, is really important. Yeah. I mean, I guess everybody has, not everybody, but everybody who works in this uh, or comes from a, like a design or creative, has a design or creative background, has experienced this, this tension between, for example, uh, a, a designer and, and a developer. So there's, there's usually like a, I don't know, they just didn't go on so well back in the days, I'd say. But through rituals and constantly communicating, I think we need both parties to help to better understand what the other side is doing. So mm-hmm. this is why rituals make, make, make a lot of sense and to really be, so everybody in the team is on the same page, what, what, what the other guy is doing or girl uh, right now. So yeah, hundred percent, very important. I agree. Um, I also <coughs> want to talk a little bit about, um, like, from your perspective and, and also like looking from my perspective as well. What I've often seen um, when it comes to, there's the term that's thrown around a lot, which is experience design um, and how I think, you know, with branding, branding um, often focuses, if you look on the top layer, there's a lot of the aesthetics, there's the storytelling. This is the purpose that you're kind of driving towards is to create a brand that you know, you can, um, which we talked about before, is which you kind of fall in love with, you you want to share, you you associate with, you you found your tribe, you know kind of where you are. It's something that you want to be a part of, right? Um, and this is kind of, you know, when you're building a brand, you're building up to this kind of experience. Um, but with product development on, on the underlying um, kind of part of the process is it's very methodical. And I think a lot of the time, the part that you're aiming for with brand is actually forgotten. And this is, a, this is the experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, you can go from A to B very easily. Um, and you know, this is what great UX does. It, it creates a space that's familiar. So you kind of, you understand and you feel like you've been there before. So you're not, it's not rocket science. You don't have to work something out over mm-hmm. and over again. You follow certain patterns. But the bit that brings you into the tribe and really makes you connect with, uh, with the brand or with the experience is somewhat I found to not be seen as an important factor. And um, yeah, something I want to ask you about is like, how do you see, or what do you see as a difference between experience design and actually a brand? Yeah, I mean, you kind of answered your question already yourself. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, I think when you're, you have at the one side, you have, you have the brand and at the other side, you have your product. Mm-hmm. And, and the experience is just when these both come together. And that's also why, why I think they need to be on the same kind of level. Because uh, usually when, or I've, we've seen that a lot that, I don't know, somebody hired a designer at, I don't know, when they, f- when they found their company, you know, they made a logo and, and uh, provided some colors and some typeface yeah. and maybe some icons. Uh-huh. And, and then that's it. And then they, they have it and think, okay, it's done. My brand is finished. Okay, let's uh, implement it. And we focus on building our product. So this happens a lot. And, and we, yeah, the, the brand just, uh, just is, is leaving behind. And then what usually happening happens is if this company is, has a really good product, then at some point they realize, oh shit, our brand is... Uh, looks uh, it's it's not how it should be like you know it's definitely left behind okay let's hire a, a brand agency now yeah but i mean that's some, that's <coughs> quite understandable i think with a lot of um uh entrepreneurs or um 
products that are being developed or startups in, mm. in, in this case. Um, I mean, there's nothing kind of wrong with that because it's all about developing your USP, developing your, your product, right? Getting it first to market and building a really great kind of uh, foundation, this, um, this what, you know? It's really easy to say exactly what this thing is that you're building, but I think, yeah, you, you see this and we've seen this time and time again as well, is the product built is, you know, grows very quickly, mm. but then at some point, you're not connecting with uh, with the audience, and you're not getting the kind of visceral uh, response that you'd want. You know, we talk about uh, shareability and lovability quite a lot in, in the products that that we build and the, the brands that, that we develop. And I think you know this is really important. And these are some of the things that definitely need to be ingrained into not just the product but also also the culture as well. Yeah, um, but also we live in a time where you know it's it's not unusual that that like in a startup scene for example that at at a certain time there pop up like different startups who doing pretty much the same mm -hmm. so this you can see this pattern over and over again and then i mean of course the product is important but you you need to have a deeper sense of your brand to to also that i'm i'm 100% sure that you then have better opportunity to to be successful and and yeah just um, separate yourself from from your competition because there will be competition for sure and how do you do that uh, and, and we, we we've talked about this off camera quite a lot as well and i think you i know maybe you have a slightly controversial uh, opinion on it but it's something that i definitely want to talk about which is uh, validation and um, how do you kind of gauge yourself how do you find out if you're doing the right thing with your with your business if mm. you're moving in the right in the right direction Yeah, validation is actually uh, a tricky part when it comes to brand development. Um, we 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 do it, so we we definitely if you, if we build a brand, then we, we we try to test it and get feedback from uh, from the, from the audience. And we recommend that you guys do that as well. Go out, do A B testing, also do hallway <laughs> tests, which is just basically ask random people or ask people. Um, that you know just to kind of get some feedback I mean it can be very fuzzy the kind of feedback you, that you get because sometimes yeah. it's it can be you know one of your mates who's doing it so they're going to give you maybe a better praise than, than, you, than you'd want but definitely it's something that you can do just by you know asking the right questions yeah and it's, it's also also when you look at product development let's say you test a button for a website or let's say a call to action somewhere yeah you can test it on a uh, corner on the left corner or on the right corner and then you just see okay in a ux test okay what performs better mm -hmm. and then you have pretty clear uh, idea about okay what's what performs actually better but with branding for example if you say okay uh, here we show you this logo and this logo which one you like more you know then this is i don't know so this is very 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 difficult to to really judge that's because it's all about personal taste you know the social background the experience somebody did you know mm. and also <clears throat> the, with the logo okay if the brand is just new and you never seen the logo maybe it works you know you can say okay 80% like this logo more than than this then say okay fine we do this one but for example if there is a like an already established brand let's say like medium for example who mm -hmm. who, who just did a big relaunch brand relaunch um, I would it's just an assumption I, I have no proof for that but I would say if you have would show them like the old logo and the new one and then you present it to to the people who already use medium yeah mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they would have said no we want to keep the old one because they're just so used to it and you mm -hmm. know it's just so such a big change for them because it's so different They would never have said yes, love it, let's do it. I think so I would say the majority definitely would stick with the old one. Yeah, and I, I think the you know the there's definitely room in the market, and there, and there should be um, the companies who challenge the challenge the uh, the norm or challenge a certain perspective on things. I think it's really important to do that as well, especially in a space where um, lots and lots of products are competing against each other. So 
you know, for instance, um, uh, Dropbox. I mean, there isn't just Dropbox anymore. At one point, Dropbox kind of dominated the market. And then there's all these other market, all these other products that are coming up and challenging. And I think, you know, you really have to um, break out of the norm to actually create a conversation, to create kind of engagement with the audience. And sometimes it's, it's, um, it's loved and sometimes it's hated. And I think, you know, it's great to be loved and it's great to be hated. Um, but it's just, it's important to get out there and have the conversation. And I think uh, Instagram is a really good example. Mm-hmm. Um, people loved the Instagram logo, right? If you look back now, you'd probably be like, eh, I don't know, but it's because you were so used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if you'd have valid, tried to validate the logo, you know, if you'd have actually gone into more of uh, the user testing, um, I would say probably the majority of people would say, mm, no, I'm not really into that. So I think, you know, there's a certain balance that you have to find. And, uh, you know, once Instagram actually launched the logo, I mean, you, you can't really look back. I mean, when it was launched, there was a shitstorm. People hated it. They are like, bring back my logo. Um, but it's, it's important that, you know, there are uh, pioneers out there as well who will challenge the, the status quo and really kind of uh, break convention. And eventually, to be honest, once it's done, it kind of just becomes an arm again, right? You just kind of become uh, comfortable with this new new approach, and it shakes shapes up shakes up the market, which I think is yeah, it's really really important to do. Yeah, I mean, there's no brand relaunch with, with, which not comes with some friction, but yeah. it's usually, as you said, it's in the beginning. You know, there might be a shitstorm and a lot of conversation, but in the long term. It's. I would. I wouldn't say everything is is going to be better because some rebrands are shit, mm. <laughs> and worse than it was before. But uh, the good ones, yeah, then it it pays out definitely at at the end of the day. So I mean, how do you feel then, really, about? <clears throat> I suppose does does validation really have uh, have a space? Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. You should get people's opinion out out there what they think about i mean you do it in branding you do it at the beginning to find out okay how is the brand perceived right now but afterwards makes sense too because then you can just see okay how how big is the change you know you're you're doing and then how much tension is there and how big is the friction and then maybe you can adjust but yeah still makes sense to to validate for sure okay cool um yeah i'd, I'd also um, like to kind of um dive again a bit deeper into into the workplace and, and talk a little bit we talked about collaboration um earlier but i'd like to discuss a bit about what we can learn from um digital product development and like the kind of the methods that are being applied there and actually using them internally inside of your own uh, teams. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, the this lean startup methodology, you know, it's it's also all about like working agile mm-hmm. and and working with Scrum, for example, and we all and the 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 branding process is it used to be very linear. And that's to to some point. I think it's okay, but also we are talking about we talked about that um, like a lot of the companies you know just did like their branding and then thought okay that's it, no that's fine for the next ten years, but that's just wrong. Branding is a process and it needs to keep up with your product. Mm-hmm. So I mean you can kind of like the first. Uh, development phase let's say you define a logo and the colors and um, and the typefaces um, of course you can have like a more like a waterfall approach on that but afterwards once you start implementing that brand and 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 roll the the, the whole brand out it's it, it makes much more sense to gen, just start an agile process and you know keep on developing your brand I think um, right now as well, I think because of Corona as well, you're actually seeing um, some kind of like, let's say validation in a way, um, 
that these kind of tools actually work and this process works. I think um, within the traditional sense, I think um, different team members within, within a unit, often the designers, I would say, um, are not necessarily given the responsibilities that you would uh, normally get within a kind of a normal um, working environment. And I think now that you start to see these kind of tools being used, you know, you have to give away some of this responsibility. Um, and actually, from what I've seen and what I've heard in the conversations that I've had as well, is that people seem to be, because they're given that responsibility, they, they perform. Mm -hmm. And I think this is, a, this is kind of proof, in a way, that um, taking on some of these methods and applying them into different industries actually really works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I would also add that it is important that for startups uh, definitely to to start to think about okay, I need also to to build internally the structures, you know, build the team, um, integrate the methods to to keep on uh, building my brand. It's like it needs to be like parallel to, to product development in, in my opinion. So you cannot just outsource it and maybe the initial brand design you know can be done by somebody uh, who's just really good in that. Mm -hmm. But afterwards uh, you should really take, take care of yourself and not be uh, depending on, on, on some external agency. But I also think one of the things that's really changed as well is again just going back to the current uh, situation um, that we're able to be, able to be a lot more agile in the way that we actually build things. So if we look traditionally at, at brand design, um, it would be expected that at the end of a project, you deliver um, a design system or a style guide, right? And the style guide is traditionally either printed in a book mm. or it's sent out as a PDF. So, you know, there's not really that much wiggle room, you know? But if you, go, if you come back over to digital product development, you're in this constant state of beta, right? So it's always version 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. There's a continue, continuous iteration because you're able to have this conversation with the, with the user, with your audience and, and adapt, you know, and actually um, be able to change things and, and grow things. And I mean, this is one of the things that we're trying to do is to try and kind of bring those two things together. Mm -hmm. like. Break that, um, break that norm that has seemed to become a standard. You know, even now today, if I'm, I'm working with somebody and we're going to be building a design system, um, it's sometimes expected from a from our perspective that we'll be delivering a PDF. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's use something like Frontify. I mean, this is something that we're using at the moment as well, or, or just like some kind of space that is easy to to change and and to adapt. And sometimes I think the client also has a difficult um, time also with that. And I think because you're so used to um, working in this waterfall perspective where you want to work as much as you can, get as much as you can done for a launch, and then that's it, you're done and you, you push the market. I think, you know, we, we learned this in uh, product development a long time ago um, when uh, building MVPs, you know, there was um, lots and lots of money wasted and lost as software companies were pushing these products out to market and using waterfall, getting them into the marketplace and yeah, them failing, you know? So it's much better to take bits and pieces, push them, test them, push them, test them, and then kind of reevaluate what's mm. working and what's not. And you know, we, this is something that we're doing is we're trying to, or we are bringing this into our process and, and trying to, show that and also i think it it also uh, takes a bit of um i know you have to be a little bit brave from from the client's perspective because when you say to somebody that your brand is never done yeah that's quite a scary thing i would say yeah because like well, i want you know i want to wear this i want to i want to look good i want to be proud you can still be proud, you can still look good, but tomorrow you might be wearing, you know, a slightly different color than you were wearing today. I mean, just be brave. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to change your logo every two weeks or something, you know? 
it's it's more about because you know your brand is so deeply integrated into especially into a digital product that uh, you need to have the possibility to to adjust when it's necessary yeah I think one of the things that um, is definitely uh, changed or kind of be, being actually made to become a reality is that today you can actually um, change your brand very very easily I mean um, Back in the day, you know, it would definitely be expected that you would be presenting a PDF to your uh, to your client as a as a style guide when you wrapped everything up at the end of the day. But I think you know today, definitely with uh, platforms like Frontify, or even if you're building your own uh, platform, it's a lot easier to be able to constantly iterate, constantly iterate. Yeah. So I mean, with uh, with that being said, I think yeah, we we covered quite a lot today. Um, we definitely looked at maybe too much maybe maybe we gave a bit away too much but I think one of the reasons that we're that we're doing this is so um, you guys can be part of the conversation and these are the kind of conversations that we're having on a on a daily basis and uh, yeah well it's some of the knowledge that you know I think the one of the ways that we work is definitely that we want to be able to to share as much as we can uh, to enable you guys to actually be able to take some of the or cherry pick take some of the best bits and start to apply them to your brand so yeah with uh with that said um i'd just like to say thanks if you've reached it to to this point um thank you for uh for watching the video and uh, don't forget to like um we highly appreciate it uh, subscribe so we can continue to make uh more of this content for you guys and we will uh yeah, we will keep on developing this kind of format in an agile and lean way. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, there's and probably a lot of flaws in this video already. Learn, test uh, and repeat. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're just happy to have you guys uh, coming along for on this journey with us. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep sharing and, and making this content. And yeah, if you, uh, if you do like and if you do subscribe, as I said before, it definitely helps us uh, to be able to continue to make the type of content that we want to. So, yeah, until next time. See you soon. We'll see you in the next video.